baby, let's go. All right, so I am getting ready to go out for the evening hunt. We got the tail end of this cold front coming in. I thought it was gonna be able to squeak its way in before the hunt, but we're gonna be just at the end of it this evening. And it's a tough wind to hunt throughout here in Del Rio. I'm trying to get a, a better gauge on where my stand locations are in reference to the wind. And I don't really have many options to hunt this evening. So I'm going down, checking out on X, how my stand is positioned, and where I think the deer are gonna be coming from, and lining that up with the wind direction. I think I'll be fine at this stand that's over on the west end of the property. There are some good deer historically over there. I just haven't really been seeing many mature bucks, but I'm not gonna risk just completely ruining my other spots trying to tough it out in this wind, but I should be able to at least see some deer. I'm not against shooting a doe. We could do a little catch and cook if I go that route. I'm excited. You never know what you'll see out here. Let's go hop in the stand and see what we can put together. Right there is my setup. We got a pond that runs right through here. I had a tree stand right over there that I like to hunt out of. The reason I stopped hunting over there is because early in the season, that pond actually filled up. I wouldn't have been able to get a shot at anything. So I put this little stand right here. It's nothing much, but it gives me a good opportunity to catch one of these bucks moving from their bedding that's over there a little bit and transitioning through here once they run into my feed before they work into the pond area, which is just right on the other side of this blind. Just got settled into the stand. The way it's shaping out, it seems to be a pretty good evening. The wind has started to lay down a bunch, but every 10, 15 minutes, there's a pretty good gust of wind, but it's a true wind. It's not shifting at all. It's coming out of the north and staying that way. If I don't think there's a chance I'll see a good buck, then we'll do a catch and cook on one of these, one of these old nannies. So I'm gonna sit back and we'll see what this evening has in store.
just be a doe but whew, this cold front has me feeling some type of way my camera is about to die this camera's about to die my gopro already died i gotta get some new batteries for this cold weather and i gotta get some more clothes on. i'll pick back up with y'all when i get back to the truck when i'm a little bit warmer and i can get my batteries charged up and stuff but i am literally shaking and it's not necessarily because i was that nervous to shoot a doe I'm just cold, but uh, beautiful evening. Got a nice dough on the ground. Catch, clean, and cook, baby. Let's go. Alrighty, everybody. We did make it back to the truck to get warm. And I went up to the house, charged my batteries, and we are ready to go get this dough now. I haven't even taken a peek at the air or anything like that. So, fingers crossed. I have this sucker down, but after reviewing the footage, I can almost guarantee that we're gonna find this sucker within 100 yards of where I shot it. Since we're doing a catch, clean, and cook on this dough, I need to get some ice out of the freezer that's right here and load it into the cooler that's in the bed of the truck, and then we can go take up blood and hopefully find this dough. Because while I was up at the house, I realized I literally and out of food. So if I want dinner, I better make sure I clean this sucker up and cook it tonight. And y'all are gonna join me on that journey. So let's get this ice loaded into the cooler and then we can head on over to the deer and hopefully find it pretty quickly. I really don't need ice, but I guess it's nice to have. All right, let's go find this deer. There's a blind I shot it from. The old telephone pole getting it done all right let's check out this arrow oh that's a spider on the luminoc holy shnikes watch your fingers arrow looks real good now that i have a lot more information about the shot thanks to the arrow and reviewing the footage at the house we can go ahead and get started on this blood trail and hopefully confirm my guess of this deer being dead within 100 yards so let's go take up this trail too much of her right now because there is a ridiculous amount of blood and youtube does not like that i'm gonna go ahead and drag her back to the truck and then get the cleaning and cooking process started i got her all loaded up in the truck now it's time to move her on over to the skinning rack where we can get her all cut up so we can enjoy a nice backstrap dinner Since I'm planning on only doing the back straps tonight, I'm gonna hang her from her head. And I don't need this bar in order to do that. But I do need slack, so that's what I'm doing. Let's get this off. All right, so she's all loaded up now, ready for me to get to cutting. So y'all enjoy this time lapse of me cleaning the deer.
just need to hose this sucker down. Then we can go ahead and put that bad boy in a zip lock. And then start spraying this other one. So my brother taught me this. He said, this silver lining right here, all this white stuff, I don't know if you can see it from your angle, but if you're planning on keeping it in the freezer for a long time, this silver lining actually prevents freezer burn. So just keep that in mind if you're ever cleaning a deer and you wanted to prevent freezer burn, that's the way to do it. I don't know about y'all, but I think it's time for dinner. Let's go cook these bad boys up. So we're just gonna do one back strap. So right here, what I'm gonna do is just get rid of all this stuff. As you can see, there's one long layer. If you leave this stuff on, any of it, it's gonna make your back strap taste a lot more gamey. So just keep that in mind. So right here, I'm just cutting this layer off. There's definitely better ways to do this. This knife is not a great one. As you can see, that meat's starting to look a lot better than it did before I started cutting this bad boy. Voila. So, I don't know how well you can tell, but that looks a lot better. All right, so now that we have all the bad stuff off, before we season it, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into steaks. This is also where you would go ahead and clean up any last bits of that bad stuff. As you can see here, I have three cuts of backstrap that are ready to be seasoned. I don't have some elaborate recipe like I'm sure some people out there do. All I tend to use is Tony's and Worcestershire sauce. Before we season it, we need to go ahead and get this grill fired up. Since it's pretty cold outside, it'll take a little bit of time for the grill to get to the temperature needed in order to get these back straps cooked properly. So let's go ahead and get this propane going and open this bad boy up. Let's get this opened up. Let's grab the lighter. Woo! Now we're ready. And then we just close this up. All right. The only other thing I'd add is probably just some olive oil, just so the seasoning sticks and really soaks into that meat. Just a little bit. So now that we have the olive oil, just lather it up real good. And let it soak. Booyah. Then I like to go Tony's. I like a lot of seasoning. Some people don't. I like to rub that Tony's in. Flip, rub, flip, rub, flip. I double Tony it. Rub, rub. Rub, and then I'll go Worcestershire on the back side. And I only go Worcestershire on one side. And I rub that in, rub that in, rub that in. All right, now that we have them seasoned, let's check on this one more time and confirm. Yep, that's definitely hot enough. So, grill's ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and toss them on here. I personally like mine a little smoky, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the grill. Not for too long, but just for a little bit, because we don't want them 
Remember, we've already been letting the grill heat up so much already. I gotta make sure I don't burn them, but I do like a rough smoky flavor. So I like to close the grill. Some people don't close it that long, but it's just up to you. So it hadn't been too long, but I think it's time to flip them. Those are looking good. This little one, it's probably done. I bet this one's done too. Go ahead and shut this propane off. And we'll let him finish up. Last but not least, we'll check the small one. This one's a little overdone, but. I'm not joking. It's still delicious. You will not find a healthier way to get your meat than if you go out there and hunt and harvest and cook your meat all in the same day. I mean, this is literally delicious. I shot this two hours ago and this is only the back strap and look how much meat this is. I just hammered the rest of that back strap and I'm stuffed. But I will say it was probably the best backstrap I've ever personally prepared. I don't know how many other people would like it, but man, that was a that was a lot of fun today. Doing a catch, clean, and cook. I honestly might start doing them more often. Across the board on social media, a pretty common discussion is the overall disgust around factory farming. The more and more I hear those conversations and I think about that, there is a point there because I go to the grocery store and let's say I grab a steak. I literally have no idea what happened to that steak before I grabbed it at the grocery store. There are a lot of steps that are required in order to get that steak to the grocery store. I believe I showed y'all a version of how that could go today. I harvested the animal with a bow and arrow, but at these factory farms, God knows how they're killing the animals. God knows what happens after they harvest it and have to clean the animals. I got to do it myself today, so I personally have a connection with the meat I'm eating. When I go and purchase a steak from a grocery store, I'm so disconnected from the entire process. The more and more I sit there and think about that, the less I wanna go purchase a steak. I mean, it's just that easy, plain and simple. We have a lot more deer season left and I got a lot more hunting to do. So if you did enjoy this video and wanna see more catch, clean and cooks in the future, make sure you drop a comment and let me know. Share this with somebody that you think might enjoy this kind of video. And as always, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you and I'll catch you in the next video.